One of my lovely viewers said it was a great video and the card fool made it feel like it was very much human. So I'm hoping that still does. Um, these things, live things, there's always a little bit of technical hiccup, but let's not worry about that. We are, like I say, going to be looking at these guys say Cadbury's chocolate fingers. I have three boxes of these and in the vain hope that I'm not going to eat most of them as we go through. But this is what we're going to do. So let's look at the recipe. Let's get stuck straight into this. So it's Cadbury's chocolate finger cheesecake sort of more dairy milk cheesecake as well because we're using the, the Cadbury's dairy milk there and putting that through our cheesecake filling and making a dairy milk ganache to go on the top. Now this cheesecake, if you're using this recipe, is going to make about an eight inch cheesecake and it's going to serve between 10 and 12 portions. During the live, I'm going to be making a slightly smaller one, but the ingredients and everything you'll see are for the, the regular size one. It's just that there's only two of us, and if I do a big one, we'll end up looking like a cheesecake. So this is going to serve about 10 to 12 people, portions, whoever you want to share it with. It's really quick. It's really easy to all put together. Like I say, it's no bake, so there's absolutely no faff in here. We haven't got to worry about gelatin or water baths, or cracking, or anything like that. We're going to mix it all together, pop it in the fridge, and then that's where it lives <laughs> until you're ready to cut it up and serve it. It is going to be full of a really smooth and creamy Cadbury's Dairy Milk um, cheesecake filling. And we're going to surround this with a sort of a chocolate finger crust. So a bit like on the Bailey's one where we had the Oreo crust crumb crust up the sides of our cheesecake, which sort of made it more like a cheesecake pie. We're going to be putting an outside with it and that's going to be our chocolate fingers. So that's why we've got quite a lot <laughs> because I also eat them. Um, and this is a really good one. Again, no baked cheesecakes are really good to do with the little ones. Get them in the kitchen. There's lots of mixing and stirring and breaking and crushing and all sorts of bits and pieces that they can get stuck into. Um, you know, and if they're like me, you want to make sure you've got plenty of biscuits and chocolate because that will disappear as you go through the recipe. <laughs> so that's a very brief, quick overview of what we're going to be doing today. So we've touched just on our ingredients a little bit. So let's talk about them a bit more in detail. So first up, we've got our Cadbury's uh, fingers. These are like a, if you've not had these before, they're like a short cake biscuit um like a sugar cookie biscuit and then they're covered in um cadbury's dairy milk and you can get white chocolate versions you can get dark chocolate versions caramel versions i think there's even a chocolate orange version out there so you could mix this up and and have lots of different um chocolate fingers around the outside but these are what we're going to be using but we're not going to use these for our base because we want these all around the outside so instead of the those for the base we're just going to be using regular short cake biscuits so these have got no chocolate with them these are just regular ones you can pick up in the supermarket um just grab a packet of these if you don't want to use these you could use something like a digestive biscuit or a chocolate digestive um you don't want to go anything too dark or heavy like an oreo because we're sticking with a lot of milk chocolates you don't want anything too intense in flavor for this so we need about 250 grams of shortcake biscuits for our base um, in terms of the chocolate fingers, you want about 250 grams, which is two packets. But like I said, you might want a third for mid recipe nibbling. <laughs> you can also get little um, mini chocolate fingers in multi packs. And you could do this recipe as individual portions. So if I was doing that, oh, I might use those instead. Or you could use these to decorate the top. Uh, or various bits and pieces if you want to, but you wouldn't use these for the outside crust because they're too short. Um, you're also going to need some full fat cream cheese, which I've got in the fridge at the moment because it is still really warm in here. Um, so that's in the fridge. Ideally, you take it out about 15 minutes before you're ready to start mixing it because that will help it soften up. And we'll talk about that when we get to the mixture. But it's full fat cream cheese. And again, that's really important. And as we 
bake the, as we make the recipe, I'll talk a little bit more about that. You're also going to need a little bit of icing sugar or powdered sugar. And we're just going to add this into our cheesecake filling. Just gives a little extra sweetness, takes a little hint of the cheesiness off <laughs> and helps make it just a really nice, sweet dessert filling. It's not... We're not using a caster sugar or a granulated sugar because that won't melt into, um, that won't combine into our filling very well. But the powdered sugar, icing sugar is really nice and combines really well. You're also going to need some double cream. And again, that's in the fridge, um, just chilling out. <laughs> double or heavy cream. And again, it's really important, like the cream cheese, that it is a double or a heavy cream. And or a whipping cream. And again, we'll talk about that shortly. And then it wouldn't be a dairy milk or a Cadbury's without a bar of dairy milk. Um, no, we're going to be using 200 grams, which is a standard bar. Um, but we're going to be using half of that for well, most of that for our filling and the rest for our ganache. So you'll just need like standard um, dairy milk. If you can't get dairy milk, you can't get any of the Cadbury stuff, don't worry, you don't have to make it Cadbury's. You can go and grab store own brand uh, chocolate or biscuits or things like that and um, you can do it that way. It doesn't have to be Cadbury's just because uh, the, the fingers were on offer. <laughs> there might be quite a few in the cupboard. The fingers are on offer on this week on the weekly shop so we've grabbed those instead. But you Again, you don't have to use those for the crust if you don't want to. If you just want to make this a regular cheese, chocolate cheesecake, you can leave those guys out. So that's our ingredients. Equipment-wise, then, it is really, really simple. And you're not going to need much at all. You're going to need, um, we'll start with these bits. We're going to need a very large bowl to mix everything in. You want to get it quite a wide bowl, nice big bowl, because it'll help as we whip our cream cheese and our cream together. It'll help just add some air into that mixture um, because of the surface area, and that will just give us a really light, nice cheesecake filling there. So you want a large mixing bowl. Um, I'm using a, uh, a handheld mixer today. You can do this with a stand mixer. You can do it with a balloon whisk if you want to, but you need to really get that cream whipped up. Um, so, because that's what's going to help everything uh, set um, and, and firm up. So I do recommend at least a minimum of a handheld mixer because it'll help just take the, the edge off the mixing of the cream and get you in a really good position. Uh, you'll also need a few things like, uh, obviously, spoons, spatulas, my trusty angled palette knife. This is just going to help you smooth over the top of your cheesecake filling bits and pieces. You also need a little bit of baking parchment, which we'll um, talk about when we set up the pans. And then lastly, you're going to need some springform pans. Now, this recipe, the ingredients I've got here are for an eight-inch springform pan. Because it's just two of us, I'm just going to pare it down a little bit as I make this today into a smaller six-inch pan. But both of these are springform. And I'll show you on the bigger one. And that's these ones with the clamps on the side. And the reason we like these for cheesecakes is when it's set... Um, you don't want to be trying to push it out from like a loose base cake pan or anything like that or tipping it out because it's just you're just going to end up in a mess. But with these, with the clamp on the side, if you release it completely, you're able to pull the ring straight over the top of your cheesecake, which then then leave your cheesecake on this bottom base. And these bases tend to have two sides to them. They'll have like a raised lip and a sort of inset bit and most uh most springform pans will go with the inset bit so you've got this slight lip here on the edge of your base and that's where our um, baking parchment comes in because if you put your cheesecake in here and you're happy that you don't want to be taking it off this and serving it off this that's great. You can just leave it on that and move it around. But some people like to take it off, put it on a plate or a platter or serve it another way. Um, and that's where we're going to put a piece of uh, baking parchment over the top and just clamp it on. And that will help us remove it. And we'll do that when we get set up. 
So this recipe is for an eight inch sprint form, but I'm gonna be using a smaller six inch today so I can make a smaller version for us here at home. Um, and that shows really actually how scalable this recipe is. And I put all the information on the website. You can find all the ingredients lists, all the equipment lists, the full step-by-step -step and everything will be up on the website once we're done. So let's get stuck in then, let's get going. Um, and then you can see how easy this is. <laughs> so I'm going to get my cream cheese out the fridge now. Let's have a, there's an arm. <laughs> and my cream and you want to get these out like I said about 15 minutes before you start baking obviously it depends on how warm your kitchen is if it's too warm this is just gonna sag and 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 flop really easily but what we want is you want the cream cheese to be up to room temperature ish without it melting because that's gonna be make it nice and soft help it combine into that cheesecake filling, make it really nice and smooth, and it's gonna get rid of any lumps. So that's my cream cheese and my cream for the moment. So I'm just gonna pop those there. Now, there's a few things that we need to do first, and we're going to be making our biscuit base. And for that, we need our shortcake biscuits and our butter. And this is really the easiest base you can make. We're just going to crush the biscuits, melt the butter and combine the two and pop it in the fridge to set. Now, like I say, you can do this with any biscuits. You can do it with any cookies. I'm using shortcake because they go with the chocolate finger ones today. Um, so first of all, I'm going to melt my butter. I'm actually going to do this on the hob today. I'd normally pop it in the microwave, but I, I have... Because it's a smaller recipe for me, I don't have a lot of butter, so I'm just going to do that on there. So just in a heavy bottom saucepan, I'm just going to pop the butter. It is so soft, it's not going to take that long to melt at all. <laughs> oh, dear. And let's just pop that over there, because I'll need that again soon. I'm just going to pop this on, on a very low heat on the hob. You can do this in the microwave in 30 second blasts. And to be quite honest, that's probably all mine would need today. <laughs> uh, whilst that's melting then, we're going to crush our biscuits. And today I'm going to be using just a, oops, I'm going to move some bits and pieces actually out of the way. <sighs> we're just going to be using a mini chopper. Now you could do this in a food processor if you're doing a bigger one, it's a lot easier. Um, but we're just, I'm just gonna be doing it in the mini chopper. And with this, actually, I'm gonna have to pop my biscuits on something because I'm gonna have to put the things in the bowl once I've crushed up. So you could do this, if you don't have a mini chopper or a Magimix or a food processor, you can do this by hand. Just pop them into a, pop the biscuits into a Ziploc bag, a freeze bag, uh, get a rolling pin, good one for the kids and give it a bash, uh, give them a roll as well. And when you're doing this, you want them to be a fine sandy texture. We don't want lots of big lumps or uh, chunks of biscuits in our in our cheesecake crust because what will happen then is if you've got it and once it's chilled, when you try and cut it, if you hit one of those chunks, that's going to, uh, as you push down on the knife, the pressure on there is just going to split it out and you're going to end up cracking the base. So you're looking for this nice, fine, sandy texture. Doesn't take that long at all. As you can see. As I noticed a bit there, you can just hear my butter melting off. Let's do another quick round. They go in here, Louise, not in there. Like I say, you don't have to use shortcake biscuits. You could use a digestive or a chocolate chip cookie or um, things. Oh, there's the butter going. I'm just going to take that off the heat just to cool just a little whilst we finish off crushing up the biscuits. 
Especially now I've got the uh, the pal mic, you might hear a bit more noise than that. <laughs> uh, good morning, Gina. How are you? Hope you're well. Um, and everything we are. <laughs> Sunday morning, back on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Just because it's a little bit cooler here in the kitchen this morning. <laughs> I'd say a little bit cooler. It's not that much cooler than it was probably on Wednesday. It's now really humid here and a bit um, muggy. So I'm just going to pop in at the last. I'm not actually going to do all of them because I've only got a small tin. So I'm just going to leave one to the side. And we'll do the last bits here. So. Apologies, with this new lapel mic, there's some big chunks in there. So I'm not going to pull those through, pop them in, and then I'll pop them out again. With this new uh, lapel mic, I'm hoping that it is uh, better. Like, because I was noticing, because this is quite a big room with the dining room attached, that it got quite echoey, especially as I'm a little bit further away from the camera than I used to be. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping it's all okay. It's they're they're chargeable, I like rechargeables, and I have charged them up for today, so I'm hoping they're still charged. <laughs> right, let's just get rid of that. So here then we've got our um, shortcake biscuit crumb and our butter has melted. You just want to make sure it's really well melted. There's no sort of chunks or butter or anything in there. Um, mix and pieces. Just make a well in the center and pour in. And I'm just going to re, because I'm going to melt the chocolate on the hob as well today. So I'm just going to reuse that pan with a little bit of water in there. Stay. <laughs> uh, Gina says the, the audio sounds good. That's really good. I'm really, really pleased. It's, um, I'm hoping it will be better all round. I did have a lapel mic, but it was on a cord. And every time I, I had tried it and I'd been just doing my normal videos using that and I, it was just a, a trip hazard for me waiting to happen. <laughs> so, um, right, we've mixed our butter in with our short bread, short cake biscuits, apologies. And that's all into this. Now it's like a wet, sandy texture. But before we add that into our tin, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, like we're saying, we need to line it. So open your spring form as wide as it will go and get your baits. And you want a little bit of parchment paper that fits nicely over the top there. So it's got space on either side. Because when we put it on and it clamps, it will sort of crunch up a little bit. So get that over the top really nice and snug. And then holding everything in place, ping it through. So it ends up like, like this little skirt. If you want to, you can cut these bits off. But actually, once you've baked it, and you want to get it, well, once you've baked it, there's no bait. Once it's set uh, and you want to get this out, you can just use that to help pull the cheesecake off the base really gently and then pull that away from that. So I'd recommend just leaving that round the edge. Before we add this, then, we're going to dive in with our fingers, with our Cadbury's chocolate fingers. Now, you'll probably want, for this one, this is six inch, you're not going to need... Um, two packets but for like the eight inch one for the regular one for the size that we've got in the ingredients you're going to need at least two um, if you want to um, oh these are my favorites <laughs> um, so let's oh, I'm trying I did say watch how many of these I do and don't eat <laughs> And so when you pop them in, we want to pop it with the nice rounded bit to the outside. And then it's 
they once you start get get oh God, it's really warm in here again <laughs> um once you get going they will sort of stand up so just actually we might need those two packets i might be revising how many you need this would be so much easier if it wasn't really warm in here come on stand up so flat side in the look of concentration on the face flat side in round side out we are going to need more i really thought when i did my calculations that for circumference and uh, everything we would only need this is how warm it is it is really warm in here we thought we'd only need one packet or just over one packet but i can see these starting to bend over like um angle a little bit <laughs> So I'm going to go one from one side, one from the other, because that will help me keep them upright. And I say, once you start getting going, the, the whole cheesecake um, biscuits, the cr biscuit crust will start um, behaving itself. And I say, if you've got like the white chocolate ones and the dark chocolate ones or the... Uh, how long until they do a caramel milk one? Now, if you didn't see the Biscoff Rocky Road last week, um, caramel milk, which is um, a Cadbury's chocolate, like caramelized white chocolate that they do uh, down in Australia, has finally hit the shelves over here. We are going to need another packet, and that's before I've even eaten them. <laughs> um, and it's it's a bit like old uh, school caramac if anybody knows what that it is um and it's amazing it's really good but these these would be good on that but i think that would be really really sweet but i'm waffling now because i'm trying not to eat these <laughs> um if anyone has watched the vicar of dibley there's uh bless her emma chambers alice it has uh a penchant for chocolate biscuits, chocolate finger biscuits. I'm not going to demonstrate. It's a Sunday morning. Um, so these are coming nicely together. Like I say, keep the round bit on the outside, the flat bit in the middle. And then when we put our biscuit crumb in here, we're going to put it in the middle of these and that's going to hold everything together anyway. And then obviously we're going to chill it in the fridge. Uh, no, don't fall over. Don't you fall over. We've got that far. <laughs> um, and because of these, you don't need to do a lot of um, decorating on the top. So normally I might put some swirly bits on or chocolate or bits and pieces. These are going to stick up that a little bit further. We're going to add a chocolate ganache as well onto the top of our cheesecake filling once that's all set. So, um, and then the, the biscuits will stick up. If anybody's seen like the, uh, you've seen like the pigs in a mud bath, mud, chocolate mud cake with Kit Kat fingers around the outside, you could do the same uh, here with Kit Kats as well. Um, and there should be room for one, a little one, without destroying everything. In we go. Yes. Okay. So my maths is really bad. <laughs> I did my circumference test. You're going to need three packets for an eight inch. So that's... <laughs> And you've got a few left over for some tea time treats. So I'm going to put them out of the way. Let's not get me involved in those. Pop the rubbish over there. So we've got those in and we've got our biscuit crumb. So we're just going to then pour this in just like we normally would. Get it all in. A nice, nice biscuit base in there. 
and with the back of our spoon, um, just gently press it down. If you start pressing down too hard to start with, you've got a, you're going to run the risk of I've got a lump in there that I don't want. You're going to run the risk of then pushing out all your um, Cadbury's fingers that you've just put in there. What we're going to do as well, because this is quite um, a, a delicate task this time with a cheesecake filling, I'm going to just get a little dish. And I'm going to use the, let's just get rid of that one there. My hands are clean. I'm just going to use the base of this to push down. And that will help also because it's curved. I can just push on my fingers a little bit just to make sure they're all around the edge. There we go. So we will be back to Wednesday this week, hoping it's uh, going to be still a little bit cooler because we're um, Sundays, like I say, we've got things on. So we will be back on Wednesday. Let's just get rid of some of the biscuit crumbs. And in here then we've got our chocolate fingers. I won't turn up too much, but you can also see our base. Now this goes into the fridge to chill. You want to chill for about half an hour at least. If you're really pushed on time, you can pop it in the freezer and it will it will chill it a lot quicker. But we're going to pop it in the fridge because we need to make our cheesecake filling. By the time we want to come and fill it, it should be ready to go. <laughs> Don't do it too soon, though, because it still won't be set. And your cheesecake filling, when you add it to it, will just sort of separate out your... Um, your biscuit base and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna grab a quick drink. Right, on to our filling then. And so for our filling, we're gonna be making a dairy milk chocolate cheesecake filling. Now, like I say, you don't have to be dairy milk. It could be um, uh, just regular milk chocolate if you want to. It doesn't have to be Cadbury's. It's just obviously we've got the fingers and all sorts of that. So I'm doing dairy milk. And we're going to do this over the hob. Now, you can do this in the microwave. Um, I, I can't be bothered with the microwave this morning, to be quite honest. So we want to melt these. Now, I need to transfer this into another bowl because it's not quite big enough. So I'm just going to rinse out this bowl that I've just used. I don't want any biscuit crumbs in there. And we're going to pop it over a low simmering pan of water. So in the pan, I've got about an inch of water. And this bowl will just rest into the top of the saucepan, but the bowl is not going to touch the water. We talked about this on the Rocky Road the other week. If it touches the water, your chocolate's going to seize, get too hot and seize and become grainy. So let's just pop that and the stray dairy milk, come on, into a larger bowl. And then we'll pop this over there, over a medium to low heat, and pop our bowl in the top. You can do this in the microwave, just pop it in in 30 second blasts and give it a stir through. Don't go, don't be tempted to put it on for a minute and leave it because again, you'll over you'll overheat the chocolate and it'll seize and become grainy. Um, and it won't when you add it into the, the cheesecake filling, it'll be quite a coarse, bitter taste. Um, so just gentle. And with both methods, what you want to do is to take this to a point where about 70 to 80 percent of the chocolate is melting. And then when you take it off the heat or out of the microwave, the leftover heat in the rest of the chocolate will that's already melted will help melt those remaining chocolate chunks um, as it as we leave it to cool down. Because what we don't want to do as well is take it straight out of the microwave or straight off the heat and add it into our cheesecake filling because it will just cook it basically melt it out and that's, that's
30 minutes timer. Well, we're doing well today after enough initial, <laughs> ah, this morning. So whilst that's doing its thing, it won't take long because the chocolate was pretty melted already. Well, it felt really quite soft and that's been in the cupboard and out of the heat but um, it's, it's, it's warm. I took a packet of um, chocolate buttons or something out the other night when we, we were hitting about 31 outside. So I dread to think what it was in here. And it was in the cupboard over there, out of the way, and it had melted. <laughs> it was that bad. Um, but I'm not complaining. It's been nice. The garden is loving it. It's also loving the rain. Anyway, back to our filling. The chocolate is going to melt. So first up then, we're going to start bringing together our cheesecake mix. And for that, you're going to need your full fat cream cheese, your double or heavy cream, and your icing sugar. So we'll start off, we'll get a clean spatula because that one's got crumbs on it with your cream cheese. Um, for a large cheesecake, you want about 400 to 500 grams um, of full fat cream cheese. Now with this, full fat is key um, because it's that fat in the cream and the cheese that when you've whipped it and all binds together, that's what's going to get give you that nice set cheesecake filling without the gelatin, without the baking, without the eggs. Um, so they are really sort of important. I'm just going to turn that down because I can hear it now. Um, so full fat is, is really, really key. Now here in the UK and Europe and Ireland and things, things like Philadelphia is your best bet. Uh, you can get store-bought ones. They do tend to have a higher water content. Um, so when you peel back the foil, just any water that's on the top, drain it off. And that water content is sort of what's going to tell us how much we can whip this and we're going to be really really gentle with it because if you over whip cream cheese that water content and everything that's going on in the cream cheese sort of slackens it off um, and if you've ever made cream cheese frosting or so, like a cream something else with a cream cheese even a savory one once you've mixed it a bit you notice it becomes really quite runny and liquid and once you've got to that stage you can't go back so we want to treat this with care. And that's another reason we want to use full fat because that has a lower water content than a full fat cream, uh, low fat cream cheese or even the lightest or lowest um, uh, cream cheeses that are options that you can get out there. If you're on a low fat diet or you want to, uh, my mom does it a lot. You can use uh, lower fat cream cheeses, but I'd suggest making those as individual portions in a little container, something like this that I've got the cream in because it will just help contain it all in one thing. Uh, if you use lower fat in a larger cheesecake where you're going to slice it up, it won't hold. And when you cut it, it will just all run out. Um, so it's really, really key. <laughs> can't stress it enough if you're at some places on the continent or in the states especially canada and australia you can buy block cream cheese and that definitely has a lower water content and it really is probably the best thing that you want to be using um, for a uh, no baked cheesecake but it is a lot harder to get hold of over here in the uk um, you you can do but it's very expensive Philadelphia is your best option and it tastes just as good. Just be careful when you're using it. So I can hear that doing its thing and uh, hopefully melting the chocolate. So we'll leave that to it. So into our large mixing bowl, I've added my cream cheese. Before I add the cream then, I'm going to also add in my icing sugar. So this is just regular powdered sugar or icing sugar. And this just gives us a little bit of sweetness in our um, cheesecake filling. Just takes the cheesiness edge off a little bit there. And what I'm doing here is I'm just mixing it gently by hand. Um, I'm not getting the whisk in at this point at all. One, because if we put it in, even though it's a small amount of icing sugar, it's just going to cloud up. But two, like I was just saying, we don't want to overwork that cream cheese, especially when it's quite a warm, muggy, humidy day. 
So I've just folded that all into there. Before we go on to the cream, I'm going to just check this chocolate. I'm going to give it a stir through. So the bowl will be hot if you're doing it this way. So just be careful. I'm just going to leave that there. Now that is melting really, really nicely. And actually, it's probably about there. So let me pop that there. So this chocolate, there's still a few little lumps in there, but like I said, the residual heat from the rest of that chocolate will melt that nice and gently. Just give it a stir through. Now, leave this somewhere out. Don't leave it in the bowl to do it because it will still keep um, melting and heating it and seizing it. But actually, we want to start to get this to cool down a little bit. So... I've just stirred that through. I can see all my chocolate is melting. I'm just going to leave it on the hot trivet to one side and put my oven glove away for the moment. So that's that. So whilst that's cooling, we can whip up the rest of our cheesecake filling. And for this then, now we've got our double or heavy cream. Again, like the cream cheese, it needs to be double heavy, high fat content, because it's that that's going to bind everything together. You can use a whipping cream um, if you prefer as well. I'm just going to use that spatula to scoop everything out. Oh, and now I've got a itchy nose. I had, with the, the heat, I had a good week of hay fever free time. <laughs> and now it's sort of itching me again. So let's just get rid of that one. And we've got in here then our cream and our cream cheese and our icing sugar. And we're going to use our handheld mixer just to whiz this through. So I'm just going to scrape that down. There we go, pop that there. And again, we don't want to over whip this. If you over whip it, your over whipped cream, again, it'll become quite heavy, thick, quite grainy and coarse. And again, we don't want that. We want a nice, light, smooth cheesecake filling. So just on a like a mid to low speed, you get all the noise now. And just until it starts to really look like it's thickening up. that's it that's how how like I said I said this was quick and easy but you don't want it to be if it's too runny and not well combined then your cheesecake filling won't set if it's too thick obviously it will set it's just not going to give you that nice smooth filling that we're looking for and that's it if you wanted to you could um like Use white chocolate or dark chocolate or a different type of chocolate. Like the mint arrow one we've done um, with mint arrow chocolate melted. You could add a little bit of extract. You could just keep it vanilla now. But this is pretty much your base of a no-bake cheesecake. And this is why I love them so much. There's so many on the site. Um, but the next thing we want to do is add our chocolate in. So I'm just going to... Just, oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot you don't need to hear that. <laughs> Didn't want to do it on camera, and then we've got the mic on us. <laughs> Wonderful. So our chocolate needs to cool down till it's sort of holdable. That is still really hot um, for my hands, so I'm not going to take that any further uh, for the moment. I'm going to get rid of those. Um, but this is, this is as far as we want to go with that. Now, 
what you could do just whilst that's waiting if you wanted to you could break up some more of the chocolate fingers and add them into here so you've got little pockets of crunchy bits as well um to add in a little bit more texture into your cheesecake but don't forget we've got those fingers around the outside and the chocolate base uh, sorry the biscuit base <laughs> um so we're, we're just going to go with that and i it is cooling down, but it's still like warm. And that's sort of the, the temperature test for me is if I can hold the bowl and it's not sort of, like, oh, that's quite warm. Uh, that's when I know I'm, I can safely add it into my cheesecake filling. What we are going to do once we've got this all together is we're going to make a very quick and easy chocolate ganache. Um, and what will happen is that will start to cool and we'll just leave it out and it will, if it's too warm, it needs to cool and thicken up, uh, which will happen whilst the cheesecake is chilling. And then I'm going to pour that over the top. So um, just while this chocolate is cooling a little, uh, we might be all right actually now. It, once it starts cooling, especially um, when it's off the heat, it will um, cool quite quickly. I'm just going to wipe its bum. Mm. Just another minute. So let's talk about the, the ganache. So what's going to happen then is um, we're just going to heat the cream this time. Rather than melting the chocolate, and the cream together, what we'll do is we'll get a fresh bowl here and we'll add our dairy milk into it and we'll heat the cream until it's just sort of warm through. So it's, it's not boiling, we don't wanna boil it, but it's starting to sort of just simmer bubble at the outside edges. And then we're gonna pour our cream over the top of our chocolate. So again, we're gonna be using dairy milk. I'm gonna use, these are 200 gram bars. I'm gonna use half of this. So it's 100 grams of chocolate to 100 mils of cream for our, um, for our ganache. And like I say, we're just doing this while we wait for our chocolate to cool down on the, um, for the cheesecake filling. So, I swear, uh, Cadbury's dairy milk chunks used to be a lot bigger than this. Uh, they're still the same size bar, but you get more chunks. So it's not really so much a fight now of who gets all of the chunks. <laughs> I'm just going to break these up. This is how warm it is. I don't need to snap or do anything with this chocolate. It's literally just breaking up for me. So I'm going to pop that to one side then. So that's ready to do our ganache with in a moment. I'm going to pop the scales there as well because we'll double check the amount of cream let's fit. that's better that's a lot better i can happily hold that it's not warm it's it's a little bit warm but it's not hot um which means that i can safely add my melted chocolate now into my cheesecake filling so we've got that and our cheesecake uh just pour it in i do sort of most of it and then we'll come back and finish it off um because this will start to sort of just soften and slacken our cheesecake filling a little bit you could use this you don't have to um mix it all together properly you could just leave it nice and swirly if you wanted like a little bit of a marbly effect there we go Let's get the last of that into there. And the same goes, even if you've melted, melted, melted your chocolate in the microwave, you want to make sure it's cooled down as well. Because um, obviously it's hot still. Let's get rid of that over there. And melt through. Be careful again, not to whisk it. We're not using the hand mix or anything like this. We're just folding it through with the spatula, giving it a good stir, making sure the bits at the bottom are scooped up into that mix so everything's covered in chocolate. There we go. So pull that to one side. Let's get our cheesecake base out of the fridge.
So it's not quite had the half an hour, but that's fine. You know, make sure you leave yours in for half an hour. But it has started to set. Do you see? I can. Oh no! I can tip it up. She says, feeling quite smug. Um, let's get those back in. Go in. Come on. <laughs> Don't tip your cheesecake up like that. They're not intended on doing things like that. <laughs> but there we go. We're all in. Just gonna. firm that down <laughs> and let's get let's get a bit more stability in there and some filling and packed out so everything is in oh whoops a little bit of all of my chocolate fingers you could um if you've got the uh Chocolate orange fingers, you could um, you could do uh, you could use some Terry's chocolate orange as well to smooth everything. It, not smooth to melt into the filling. You so um, like there's a chocolate orange uh, cheesecake on the blog as well. You could use that with the, the things. And so I'm just pushing everything in. And I'm doing this first with my spoon. And then I'm going to get my trusty spatula. This smells so good. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure it's in. Damn. And then this, this bit is a little bit easier on the larger side, like I say. This is a smaller size because it's just the two of us. In case my brother actually and family do turn up today they have been camping this weekend bless them in the wind and the rain although yesterday ended up as a beach day which was surprising um so i'm just gonna go around and smooth that off a little bit with my angled spatula now i know gina knows how much i rave about these and if you're a regular viewer as well you'll do but this crank in our, um, I don't know if you can see it. If I do that, maybe you can see it a little bit better. This crank in the handle means that you can spread and you're not dragging your fingers or your knuckles or anything into what you're trying to level off. If you think a normal spatula is, is straight and you've got that, which is great if you're, you're hanging over the side, but anything like this where you've got to get into it, angle spatula is definitely one of the best things um, I can highly recommend, um, especially for like cakes and cupcakes, but leveling anything off like a no-bake cheesecake. This looks just like a vat of Cadbury's chocolate custard cheesecake for me. <laughs> so this now is ready to go into the fridge and um we've got about a good inch still at the top of our uh fingers to the top we're gonna don't forget we're gonna make this quick chocolate ganache and i'm gonna leave that to one side to to cool and set before this is chilled and then i'll pour that on the top so this will take it up probably another about another depends how much it makes probably about another centimeter it's going to fill out really quite nicely there and then just sit on the top giving a nice shiny smooth finish so when you cut it you'll get the biscuits on the side you'll get that short cake biscuit base you'll get the chocolate filling you get that layer of chocolate ganache if you've seen the baileys cheesecake um it's a bit like that that's obviously a dark chocolate baileys ganache um so this now is going to go in the fridge so i'm going to pop this in the fridge and then i'll tell you what to do we'll get some cream back out whilst i'm in here there we go so the cheesecake needs to stay in the fridge for at least six hours um if you can you can do it leave it overnight because it will be better um than than sort of obviously the longer it has the more it has chance to chill um you can make this the night before you can make it well ahead you can freeze it you just want to wrap it up um sort of really well but i don't always recommend freezing it because um if you get water crystals or there's any moisture in your cheesecake filling that could um, like freeze and you'll get crystals in there and it will become a bit um, 
wet and, and not great. But if you need to, you can do. And all the information about freezing cheesecakes is up on the blog. But six hours minimum overnight is best. <laughs> right, I'm going to use this saucepan one more time. I'm just going to give it a wash up. Um, and we're going to just grab a clean tea towel. And we're just going to melt our melt. We're just going to heat through our cream now for our um, what's the the for our chocolate ganache. <laughs> Tell I haven't done a Sunday morning one for a while. <laughs> my my uh, um, my brain isn't quite working so well. <laughs> so into here then into a heavy bottom small saucepan. We're going to put some cream. So we've got. 100 grams of chocolate and whatever you do this is the easiest way for a ganache whatever you do of chocolate you want the same as cream and again heavy or double cream um if you need to you can use a whipping cream because that fat content is going to help this firm up and set also give us that glossy look to the top um so into here i'm just going to pour so this is quite thick double cream. It's going to go 100 mils, which actually could be the remainder of the, the packet. That's of the. Come on. Oh, there's loads in there still. It's all thick, but I tell you what, I'm going to. We're going to finish this one off. Let me get the good bit on the top. Let's move that out of the way. So this is going to go on the heat now for just a few moments to heat through. We're not boiling it or anything like that. We're just going to simmer it up. Now let's get another spatula. We don't want to put the spoon in there because we don't want to heat that. So that'll make it hot because it's metal. So low, gentle heat. I'm just going to pop that on there. And then all we'll do is pour our heated cream over the top of our chocolates. You do want to do this in a heat proof bowl because we are going to add heat to this. So a Pyrex bowl is best, um, really. Let's just get rid of that into there. We don't have to look at that. <laughs> Um, you could, I say, I'm doing this with dairy milk. You can use any milk chocolate if you wanted to, or if you, you could have a dark chocolate or white chocolate ganache or something like that. And you don't have to do this. You can just leave the cheesecake as it is, as we have in the fridge. Um, but this just gives that nice final touch, that sort of triple chocolatey with the filling and the biscuits and then the ganache on the top. So all just brings it together and gives you that nice look as it... Um, as you cut it up, basically. <laughs> Slice it up is the words that I'm looking for. Um, let's just have a look, see how that's doing. Nope, no, we don't want to push it in. So the reason we're not mixing this all together is, again, because we want that nice, shiny, silky, smooth ganache. If we heat the chocolate and the cream, you can do it if you push the time. You can do it that way. Just be very careful and do it over a low heat and keep stirring it through. You don't want that chocolate to overheat or catch or seize because it will then just, the whole lot will become uh, an uncontrollable, lumpy mess, really. I can hear that starting to go. So I'm just going to give it a stir up, a little shimmy shake.
and as you, you like I say you don't want to overheat this cream because it will catch and we don't want the cream to burn so I could just hear it starting to bubble a little bit there which is telling me the outside of the cream obviously is is heating first and it's starting to do it so I've just stirred everything together so I want to get a nice even heat all the way through that cream because if the center is cold but the outside is warm when we add it to the chocolate it's not going to melt it properly um, so give it a stir a little shimmy shake in the pan and then we can pour it over once it's done so I can hear it again And then one last time, and that then should be ready. You might be able to hear that with the mic now. So that's good. So unlike with the chocolate where we left this to cool before we added it to the cheesecake filling, we want the heat. So this cream, this hot cream goes straight over the top of our chocolate. Get it all in. And if you don't use all of this for your cheesecake, it will keep in the fridge and you can add it to things like ice cream, sundaes, eat it by the spoon, which is actually what Ian does. <laughs> so we've pulled our warm cream over the top of our chocolate and then we're just going to gently stir it together and keep stirring it. It'll look quite bitty as the chocolate starts to melt but as it starts to all come together and this is a really easy one you know uh, some ganaches you might pop a little bit of butter into it uh, you might have a slightly higher uh, chocolate to cream ratio um, and depends really what you're doing with it but because we want this to be nice and smooth and quite are not a thick set ganache. When it sets, it'll be still nice and easy to cut through and eat. Um, that's what we're looking for here. So you can see how quickly that has melted that chocolate and how utterly easy <laughs> that was to make. Uh, this is a really easy chocolate ganache or a chocolate sauce. Now this is warm and obviously you don't want to put it on to your cheesecake at this point so what will happen now is I'm just going to leave this give it a final stir through and I'm just going to leave this to the side and allow it to start to cool down thicken up um, ready for when I pour it onto my cheesecake later so I mean how, how simple is that chocolate ganache two ingredients five less than five minutes there we go and that's just going to sit now for the rest of the day so there we have it we've got our cheesecake chilling in the fridge we've got our chocolate ganache waiting to go on to our cheesecake when it's that time um, and then it will all come together and once it's set and the cheese uh, the ganache is poured on the top and you've allowed that to set a little while as well in the fridge then you can slice it all up i mean you don't have to let the ganache set if you slice it it'll go all runny and dribbly down the sides of your cheesecake if that's what you want um or you could use it just as a pouring sauce over the top instead but that's pretty much where we've got to and once that's done and finished i will obviously share photos and I will share the full recipe over on the blog um, which we we're catching up on it has been a week of technical stuff the the YouTube stream hasn't worked this morning because oh some analytics thing updated and I couldn't get into it I lost access for a few days and then it's all changed all my uh, bits and pieces so yeah we get it Thank you, Gina. It's lovely to see you on a Friday, uh, on a Friday, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> 
I know everybody's sort of over here, everybody's sort of split, broken up for school holidays and people are away. It's like the first weekend of being away and bits and pieces. Uh, but next week we will be back to Wednesday because uh, we have something on on Sunday. Um, and so before we go, um, as always, I'm, I'm Uh, just give you a very quick rundown of where we were. So this has been our Cadbury's chocolate finger cheesecake, and that's because we've used the chocolate fingers around the outside. You can leave those out, and you can have it as a chocolate cheesecake, a dairy milk cheesecake, or whatever. The recipe and the ingredients are all a for an eight inch spring form. I have made a slightly smaller version for us here, but the eight inch will serve between ten and twelve portions, and that depends really how big you want to. <laughs> To make them i mean you could get more out of it if you're feeling not very generous <laughs> it is really quick and easy as you saw it's a really quick ganache really quick cheesecake filling really quick biscuit base and pulling it all together um it's no bait so i'm going to turn the oven on and in the heat and the humidity that's what we want we don't want to be faffing around there it's really indulgent with all that chocolate in there's no faff there's no gelatin there's no eggs there's no cracking there's no water baths it's a great one to do with the smalls they can get stuck in and do the staring and getting all the biscuits and crushing them all up and all of them bits and pieces. Um, and you don't have to use Cadbury Stereo Milk if you don't want to. You can use regular milk chocolate um, or store-owned brands or your favourite, whatever you prefer, really. Uh, Ingredients-wise, though, this is for the 8-inch, the 8-inch spring form, which is this size. And the spring form, remember, is the one with the clamp makes your cheesecake life so much easier. Um, and you'll want 250 grams of shortcake biscuits. Um, that's for our base. <clears throat> you can switch those for a cookie or a digestive or something different, whatever you feel like. You'll need 250 grams of Cadbury's chocolate fingers plus a little bit more. I'd say eight inch. I've done my maths. I'm going to redo that and say you need three packets, which is... 375 grams of chocolate fingers you can get the little mini ones if you want to make these as a individual portion as well you need a little bit of butter not a lot unsalted we're going to melt that down we add those to the biscuits that forms our biscuit base you're also going to need your importantly your full fat cream cheese and your double or heavy cream for your filling and a little bit of icing sugar for the sweetness icing sugar because it mixes in without adding any texture or graininess or anything like a granulated sugar would be and also the Cadbury's dairy milk for the filling and if you want to, for your chocolate ganache, say you can use any milk chocolate. It's entirely up to you. Equipment wise, that spring form pan, handheld mixer will just help make sure you get a really good whip and whisk on those cheesecake fillings for a nice smoothing texture. Large mixing bowl, pilot knife, back of a spoon and a little bit of baking parchment. So I guarantee you've probably got most of that, if not all of it, hiding away in the cupboard ready to go. Uh, and as always you'll find everything once we get there um, I've got to sit down and crack on with a lot of video editing and some photographs and so much more for you guys this today that's my Sunday um, and I'll let you know as soon as everything is up there and live um, so just to say thank you very much as always for watching if you are here on the Facebook page then you know give me a like comment below let me know how, if you've given it a try if you're on the youtube channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and i'm going to pop some links up here and down there for um all my cheesecake recipes you know you can find loads out there and louise says great recipe i think i better go shopping yes <laughs> go go shopping <laughs> these are on offer at the moment as well they're like they're they're on offer in most of the supermarkets hence why we've got three packets <laughs> don't forget your face mask <laughs> um uh, i hope if you do give it a go uh you you like it um, i know ian can't wait to get in 
stuck in tomorrow. Uh, we're back on Wednesday this week, uh, Wednesday evening. Hopefully, we'll be able to, one, see, because the sun isn't coming glaring through the window. It won't be 30 degrees in here. It'll all be a lot nicer for everybody. <laughs> um, and we're going to be doing raspberry and white chocolate flapjack. I've been asked for flapjack quite a lot. Uh, Marie, my uh, friend Mel's sister, has asked for a flapjack recipe. This one is for you, Marie. So we're going to be doing raspberry and white chocolate flapjack. Again, another really easy, delicious, get the kids involved recipe. And that will be at eight o'clock on this Wednesday coming. Um, as always, I hope you have a good week. Won't be long till I see you again. Wherever you are in the world, please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.